Hey people, how you doing? Alright, so this video, which is like brain candy 8 or 9, I think it's 8, I'm going to be talking about branching possibilities within reality. The limitations, or if there are any limitations, to uh, manipulating probabilities to control your reality. So I'll start off by giving you a basic framework of like, kind of how a certain element of the universe functions. All right, because we're used to seeing this manifest universe. We see, we feel, we have these five plus senses that we use to uh, interpret the reality around us. And that's what we're generally aware of as reality, is this stuff. But the best understanding I've been able to get, both out of quantum physics, out of yoga, out of any number of different uh, philosophies, and most importantly by experience, is that this reality that we perceive is not really all that real. I mean, it is as far as our experience is generally concerned, but uh, at this location in space-time, either the one I'm sitting in right now as I make this video, or more importantly, maybe the one you are sitting in right now as you watch this video, everything from the screen you watch it on, the air you breathe, your own flesh, everything around you, um, that stuff's only kind of sort of there. It's like not the most important part of what is there in that space right now. Your flesh, all these manifested objects are like a painting on top of the canvas and the canvas is reality or like an image flashing off the water and the water is reality and all of this is just the image of the moment and a more substantial part of the universe is this like energy matrix that holds information and that information is uh, kind of like branching probabilities like, what would have happened if a decision were made differently 10 minutes ago? Would you be sitting in a different part of the house? Would an object be moved? Uh, to what would happen if that butterfly had been stepped on by that ancient lizard 63 million years ago and uh, somehow that affected the evolution of later mammals? No, or any number of things, really. I mean, there's no limit to how far you can take it, even, say, if the laws of physics worked a little bit differently, if uh, the gravitational strength of the Earth were just a little lower, and how that would have changed everything. Um, the universe has been unfolding for these 14 billion years, not just on a single track. Every time that track branches and diverges in, you know, infinite directions, the information of what happens in all of that directions exists and the mind takes that information and translates it into 3D reality that we experience as our tangible what we are. Really the most tangible part of us is the part that we're not aware of generally while we're invested in this like 3D thing that we're doing. Um, now, a lot of people take that philosophy to mean that you don't have to, like, acknowledge the reality of other people. Or they just exist as part of the matrix I'm interacting with right now. And I can see where people get led to that. But um, when you are interacting, you know, some of the information is information exchanged with other souls, other individual points of consciousness going through this whole universal living experience. When you're contacting other living beings, part of you that feels that they're alive, you're not just feeling the image, you're feeling the thinking, creating, conscious soul behind the image, okay? So that's part of where a true ethics comes from while understanding the illusory nature of this reality, is understanding that behind the illusion is another conscious living being much like yourself. Okay. But alright, back to the probabilities. I know, wandering off topic. Back to the whole probabilities thing. One form of magic is to alter probabilities. Easiest before they happen. You can experiment with rolling dice, or you make one of those little contraptions that gets you a perfectly random dice roll every time and see if you can uh, cause patterns to emerge through will. You know, meditate, get yourself to a deeper place where you can feel 
branching probabilities, and you can feel all the ones that are highly likely, clustered in the middle, with less likely, less likely, and pick which layer you get to add all that earth energy to until it happens. Okay. And, you know, that's not a bad way to fool around with games of chance. I wouldn't go betting, uh, you know, betting the family farm on it or anything, but something interesting to play with. Um, can also be interesting to play with that in more of a passive sense when uh, a lot of people, when they're working with uh, law of attraction type stuff, one of the better techniques is to just become extremely receptive to life and invest yourself in the belief that the universe itself is consciously reaching out to you with messages and coincidences and yada 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 and you're projecting out what you want and the universe is bringing it to you and it becomes a form of spell crafting of uh, harmonizing with certain potentialities so that probability and chance are constantly working in your personal favor. It gets a little hairier when you want things that could have an impact on other people and then two conscious souls are in conflict about which type of manifestation comes in the future and then you know various laws both involving the strength of the individual souls involved, inertia from what patterns have already existed prior in this little reality tunnel that all however many billion of us are uh, mutually engaged in, etc, etc. Okay. But probabilistic manipulation, I mean, now that's all applying it to future tense. <clears throat> Making the decision and getting it to happen a certain way in the normal process of time, still operating within time, just dabbling in the mechanism, not getting up into it. For quite a while, though, I was contemplating this uh, idea, and I don't mean to sound morbid, but for a little while there, I was thinking, man, made some uh, made some bad choices when I was young, just wasted a lot of time, didn't set myself up that well to pursue many of the things that I think of as my purpose in this life. What if I could go back in time? And I just started kind of obsessing over that idea. Could I go back in time and choose a different branch 20 years ago, you know, from being a little kid? Uh, can consciousness move back and forth in time? Could you take adult memories back to your child body? What would it do to the brain? Um, can you just sidestep into a different reality where you still exist, or would you be bumping another soul out of the way? Uh, what would happen to the connections you're leaving behind? Would their reality shift with yours? Does it all of a sudden snap and everybody's aware of you being in a new reality that you weren't the moment before? Do they remember the change? Do you remember the change? Um, you know... What are the rules governing all that? And generally, as humans, we think this stuff is just totally out of our reach. Like, oh yeah, interesting sci-fi story or interesting wizard Harry Potter magic storybook story book of fakeness that doesn't happen in real life is kind of what we tell ourselves. Um, I started exploring the concept a little bit uh, during out-of-body experiences and... You know, some people might not take that to be the most reliable form of exploration, but it has been very interesting. Um, as I was obsessing over this idea, you know, I started having a lot of out-of-body experiences, and it was weird because I would be pulled into a place, like, sometimes the exact same damn house, except I would actually wake up in a body, get up, walk around, talk to the people I lived with, but sometimes other people would be living with them. But it's weird because I was like so groggy and drained like in these alternate realities as I'm thinking of them. It's almost like I slipped into an alternate version of my own self, picked up this dude's body. He was basically my kicky, but a couple of timelines diverged from this one. And it's like I couldn't even control the body. It was so difficult to concentrate to even speak. It, like, uh, you know, the people in these places seemed to react to me like there was something wrong with me, like maybe I was drunk or whatever. Um, and not all of them happened in the same house, so a couple of them I'd pop over to, like, living in a completely different house with completely different people. Or uh, one where I was going, I was getting together with a bunch of people to go on a hike, and I met someone for the first time in that reality, who in reality, I, who in this 
reality I've known for 15 or 16 years. Um, so these are experiences I had that started with, you know, full consciousness, then lay down, sleep paralysis, step out of body, and then get pulled into these different places that seem to be like alternate realities of who I am in the here and now. Um, and then I guess, I, I don't know, I pulled away from it because I started to think, well, what if I really do completely separate my consciousness from this incarnation of Michael Hickey? Does that leave a corpse behind me? Does another soul come in to fill the void? What, what are the ramifications and effects on the people that I maintain energetic connections with? And that thought kind of drew me back from the whole experiment in a major way. Um, I guess my real purpose in making this video isn't to assert anything, though. It's just to encourage all of you, my friends and brothers and sisters, to contemplate what can we really do? How many rules do we imagine in our lives? How many rules do we imagine in our reality that we accept as totally real to the point where even when we're thinking of doing magic, we're thinking of doing it within these laws that we've accepted for so long. Um, how many of them are really just an element of a state of mind that we're in? How can we grow to be ready for a greater freedom? for a more radical power? And how can we let go of the comforting gravity of the rules that have shaped us for so long? How do we let go of those and fly without losing the safety and solidity that we wanted so much that led us to create those rules in the first place? Anyway, my friends, I wish you well. Blessed be.